Right, there it goes. Oh, he is here. Okay. All right, so here we have Stokes theorem. And let's just kind of review something that will apply to what we're talking about today. If I have the line integral of f dot dr, and let's assign positive orientation for that. How did we calculate this? There was, but what's the best way if it's a closed path? That's only if it's a conservative vector field, right? So if we don't know if it's conservative or not, we had something's theorem. Green's theorem, yes. Oh, you got Partial G over partial X. Yeah. Minus partial yes. F over partial Y, right? Okay, so, and this is for a closed path or closed curve C. And here's the stipulation I'm going to emphasize. This is on the XY plane, right? <clears throat> Now, we could also describe this as something like this. Instead of this double integral of the two partials, we could do the double integral of, and let's see if you can guess, What's the other thing we talked about in 15.1 that we haven't seen yet? Curl. This would be the same thing as calculating the curl of the vector field and dotting it with k. And if you're not sure why, you can kind of quickly verify. The curl would be del crossed with f, so that would be partial x, partial y, partial z. Let me do the cross product of that with f, g, and 0. Oh. Right, because we don't have, this is just on the xy plane. So now we get what? Partial y here would be 0, right? Minus partial g, partial z. That's going to be 0. Yeah, you're, so basically the only thing you're going to be left with is this last component here. Partial g, partial x, minus partial f, partial y. And then if we dot that with k, which is 0, 0, 1, I think you can see, we get the same thing. Okay, so not that we would have thought of calculating Green's theorem this way in 15.4, but just so that you see that it can be tied to curl, because that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to generalize this to three space. So let's say we have a path in three space. Maybe it looks something like this. Let's say we're going this way. And here we wrap around, and then we come back this way. 
Anyway, let's say this is our surface, and we're going to use the right hand rule, which means that we always want to have our surface on the left as we go around. So if we're going around the surface, we want to see the surface on our left hand side if we're going this way. Okay? And that's what we're going to call positive orientation. So again, we're talking about normal vectors going upward in this case. That will assure that we have that as long as the surface is on the left. Unless we have a different orientation, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, now let's review something else from 15.4. Another way that we did these uh, work integrals was to simply focus on the tangential component um, and think about how that affected the work done. And this is actually where we're going to, here, let me write it this way, also the same as f dot dr. This is where we get Stokes' theorem. So again, we're going to suppose the usual. We have sigma is a smooth oriented surface. Bounded by a curve C with positive orientation. Stokes' theorem says that the line integral of f dot t ds, more generally, instead of what we did up here with curl dot k, if we're in three space for our path, we would do curl f and then dot that with the normal vector. To get started. Okay, so this is Stokes' theorem. Now, obviously, when we calculated work integrals, I mean, this was a nice interpretation of what was going on, but in practicality, we used this formula, f dot dr. So these are one and the same. No, I wouldn't use the divergence there. I mean, it's just a matter of identifying what vector field you have, what the path is, and then just finding the curl of that. And then what we would use is the methods that we use in 15.6 to evaluate the flux intervals. Um. Where we had the um, normal vector was one of two things. If it was oriented uh, upward, we'd have minus partial x, minus partial y, and then positive 1. If it was oriented downward, then it would be partial x, partial y, negative 1 for the normal vector. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say we have the vector field f of x, y, z equal to x squared, 4xy cubed, and xy squared. We want to find the work done. Yes. 
phi f on a particle traversing z equals y as shown. So we'll just cut it off at 3 basically. z equals y is basically the line z equals y, but then we're going to extrude that, right? So we have this plane And here is the direction of motion. Oh, shoot. That's not what I wanted. Walked it that way, sorry. <clears throat> so there's our path C. Okay. So if this parallelogram was actually on the xy plane, we could use Green's theorem. Okay, but especially in a case where we have a three-dimensional path where we have x and y and z coordinates contributing to our path, uh, Stokes' theorem will help us. Okay. Uh, again, I want to point out that... Yes, go ahead. Did you just, like... Did you choose the line that's No, this was given to you, yeah. So let me say, um, as shown. Um, let me also point out, kind of like what we did yesterday with the divergence theorem, the alternate would be to parameterize these four paths and do four separate line integrals and then find the sum. Okay, that's not what we're going to do, but that would be the other option. So you could do something like this. Just do the sum four different paths. And so on and so forth. Okay, so that'd be one way to do it. But now Stokes' theorem says that to find the work, all we have to do is calculate the surface integral of the curl of f dot n ds. Okay, so first let's find the curl. So I'm just going to write everything in here, and then we'll go through it. Okay, so we take del cross f, and let's write down what that is. Uh, what would the first component be? Mm-hmm. Minus zero, because there's no z there. What would the middle component be? Y squared, but we want to do the opposite of that, right? Negative. So negative y squared. And then here we get 4y cubed. All right. So now let's set it up. So we have curl dotted with n. 
let's talk about n real quick. <clears throat> so here's our surface. Remember when we use Stokes' theorem, we want to have the surface on our left. So we want to assign negative orientation, or downward orientation. So C has positive orientation. In other words, right now, if our normal vectors are pointing upward, so I can draw those in, and I am actually going around the surface the way it's indicated, our surface would be on the right-hand side, right? But now if we assign negative orientation, so our normal vectors are pointing down, I mean, you can imagine basically you're upside down now, if that makes sense. Uh, so here's a stick figure. So if you're upside down, does that make sense that the surface would be on the left if you're going in that direction? Yes, no? Okay. So if that's the case, then what do I use for the normal vector here? We have z equals y. What would... Yes. Pos uh, downward orientation means that k is negative 1. That's the easy way to remember it. And then here you just do partial x, partial y, right? How do we transition to rectangular? Well, that's what we're going to do next. Well, what you just did. And then you have an x, r, and Because that's how we evaluated flux integrals. Or surface integrals, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. When we did surface integrals, we transitioned to rectangular by using these conversions for n ds. So it all depended on the orientation of the normal vectors. If it had an upward or downward orientation, this is how we or this is how we figured out n, and then this is just still the curl of f. Okay. Um, so in this case, sorry, I thought you meant like as far as integrating. As far as integrating, that's not too bad. When you multiply this dot product out, you get um, negative y squared minus 4y cubed. Oh, sorry. And let's just do dy dx. And now our bounds should be pretty straightforward. If you go back to... Our picture, do you guys see the region R? What would the bounds be for X and Y? X would go from 0 to 3. Oh, I didn't label it, did I? Good call. Uh, how about 1? Let's make it easier. Okay, that would be given to you. That's my bad. Um, so then y would be from 0 to 3, and x would be from 0 to 1. So that's not a hard integral. Why don't you guys take 20 seconds? Or so.
Oh, grab one, yeah. I guess they were out. What are you guys getting? Negative 90? Yeah. Good. Okay, so that's Stokes' theorem. Uh, the rest of the stuff that we're going to talk about is essentially just some conceptual things that I think will help. Um, let's start with comparing Green and Stokes. Green's theorem we've kind of already talked about this but just to make it clear so this is Green's theorem this is a special case of Stokes theorem <clears throat> 